welcome back to my channel guys today I'm going to show you guys how to make this quick and easy stuffed butternut recipe if you are new here please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss a single recipe from me all the measurements will be available for you in the description box below this is a quick and easy recipe so let's get started I'm starting off with some mint I am using lean mint and I am basically going to be adding that into my pan my my pan does not have any oil or anything I'm basically gonna be cooking this mint at a low medium heat so that is setting number four on my stove I have previously gotten questions about what I do to the pan before I add the mince meat and I do absolutely nothing I don't add any fats or anything like that I will allow the meat to release its own juices and oils and then cook the meat that way so I'm going to be sauteing my meat until it is browned on all sides for about five minutes on a low medium heat while that is cooking I'm going to be preparing my stock cube so I've got a beef stock cube which I'm just going to add one cup of water to it just to allow it enough time to dissolve if you are using liquid stock obviously you don't have to prepare your stock like I am so going back to the mince this is what it's looking like um, it's well browned on all sides so we're going to now move over to the next step which will be to add some onions I'm going to be adding some onions and then I'll be sauteing those inside my beef mint until they are nice and translucent so we are going to be doing this process until our onions are fully cooked through and they are nice and translucent then we're going to be adding some flavors to our mint the first one that I've added is a little bit of rosemary then I'm going to add a little bit of garlic flakes if you do have fresh garlic you can go ahead and use that but I didn't use a lot of garlic because I don't really want much of that garlic taste in this recipe then I'm going to be adding some medium curry powder and then lastly I'm going to be adding some turmeric and the turmeric is just to enhance the color of our mints and then I'm just going to give that a quick stir just to allow all my flavors that I've added to evenly distribute in my pan and you can see what I was talking about um, when it comes to the oils my pan does look a little bit dry but this is completely fine it doesn't take away any flavor from your mints that you are preparing so you're just going to continue cooking this and this is what it's looking like right now um, so my onions are nice and translucent I'm going to then move over to the next step and start adding the liquids so the first and foremost I'm going to be adding some tomato paste if you've got some tomato sauce you can go ahead and add tomato sauce um, I have had questions before in the past about using tomato sauce instead of tomato paste you can definitely do that um, then I'm going to be adding some chutney and the purpose for the chutney in this recipe today is just to balance off the bitterness of the tomato sauce so if you are going to be using um, tomato paste then you can use the um, chutney but if you're using tomato sauce you don't have to use the chutney because I believe that tomato sauce already has like a sweetness element to it then I've gone ahead and added my beef stock and then I'm just mixing that through just so that I can evenly distribute everything I'm going to allow that to simmer for about 10 minutes before I proceed to the next step so after 10 minutes you can see that your beef will also start to reduce the sauce that we've sort of created with the um, beef stock and it will start to look a lot like what you're seeing now and this is basically what we're trying to go for I'm not going to be adding any vegetables or anything in mine but you're more than welcome to add um, your mixed greens such as green beans some sweet kernel corn and carrots if you want to so we're going to put that aside and then we're going to go ahead and prepare our butternut so I am going to be washing and cleaning my butternut just because I'm going to be serving this with the skin on and I intend for the skin to be consumed so I'm going to be using this brush and then I'm just going to be brushing the butternut on all the sides just with some tap running water and also just trying to make sure that I get rid of any impurities that I can see with my eye um, so yeah so like with that one I had to cut that all right so now I'm moving over to the boiling step I've just prepared a pan with some water which I'm going to bring up to a boil and I'm going to be adding a little bit of oil and the purpose of the oil is because the um, butternut tends to shed off some wax 
when it's boiling so this can be very very hard to clean um, after if you don't add any oil so I'd strongly recommend that you add oil into your pan when you are boiling any hard shelled vegetable because it's going to just make it much easier for you to clean so I'm going to be boiling these for about 15 to 20 minutes and basically the main aim here is to soften the uh, skin outside and not necessarily to cook the vegetable on the inside so I'm gonna let that those cool for about 30 minutes and then I'm going to proceed with the cutting so I'm going to be cutting mine halfway through the center you can see I've already started with the cutting process so the stem over there is quite a hard thing to chop so I would recommend that you just cut that part off and then you can continue with the cutting process like I am this is just so much easier to um, work with and it will also ensure that you have a clean cut on your um, butternut and also reduces the amount of time that you would spend um, in the oven baking your butternut because it's already parboiled and almost completely cooked through so I'm going to be removing the seeds using a tablespoon I would recommend that you also try using a teaspoon it's just more effective than a tablespoon and once I've cleaned um, the seeds out I'm just going to be using the mint and I'm going to be filling up the area where the seeds were housed so you can definitely overfill this you can make it your own do as you please I'm just going to be filling each and every one of my butternuts and then I'm going to proceed to the next step. So the next step will be to prepare some chevron scoring lines on the butternut. So you can see I'm doing mine very carefully with a sharp knife and I'm first starting off with some diagonal lines um, in one direction and once I'm done with that direction I'm going to turn it over and then I'm going to be doing the same step on the other side. It's definitely up to you in terms of um, whether or not you want to do this and also how close or far apart you would like your lines to be. It's just a nice decorative um, step that you can do on your butternut just so that it looks prettier when you're serving. And this is basically what it is looking like. Just did a close up so that you guys can see. So I'm basically going to continue with this process on each and every one of my butternut heads and that's basically what I'm going to be doing. So once I've completed this step, I'm going to move over to the glazing step of the butternut. So I'm going to be glazing my butternut with a little bit of honey and cinnamon. I know that cinnamon is not for everybody, but I strongly recommend that you try this because it just takes your dish to the next level. However, if you don't want to be using this, you can just sprinkle a little bit of sugar or just baste it with um, honey as it is um or just baste it with honey like I'm showing you. So basically I'm going to be using a brush and then I'm just going to be brushing the butternut over the top with the cinnamon and honey mixture and this just gives your dish a different element to it. It brings a little bit of sweetness but it also brings a little bit more flavor into your butternut. So once I've completed that step I'm going to move forward and then I'm going to start sprinkling my cheese. So I've grated my cheese on the finer side of the grater. I find that it's much much easier to melt cheese like this and you don't use a lot and it also just looks more presentable than the bulkier chunkier side of the grater so if you guys would like to try this out i strongly recommend then you can put this in the oven as it is now or you can use some garnishes so i've just garnished mine with some chili flakes and i've also added a little bit of parsley then we're going to put this in our oven which i've set at 200 degrees and we're going to be baking this for roughly 15 minutes so we're going to put this in our oven for 15 minutes and after our cheese has melted and 15 minutes has left i would recommend that you switch off the stove and then you can just keep your butternut in there um for it to keep on absorbing the heat and also continuing to cook through but without that intensity and it will be ready to serve um anywhere between an hour after we have done this process so that is basically it for this video i hope you guys like this video don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell if you are new here comment in the comment section like this video and i'll definitely see you guys next time bye